Yo, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna be installing a $600 K-Swap radiator on my K-Swap Honda Prelude. Yeah. This is the CSF K-Swap radiator version three. This radiator is super universal. It has a breather pipe that could be set to the right, left, or even straight out through the front. It has a center mount for Civic EKs and EGs. You could remove this and plug this hole. You also got this side mount right here that you can remove and plug. Same as on the other side. It's already plugged, but we have additional hardware to add another one right there. Down on the bottom, you also have multiple mounting points as well. You got one, two, three, and four. We got a couple of brackets right here for mounting whatever you'd like. I'm not too sure what you'd mount right here. Both the inlet and outlet radiator ports are threaded. We have a port right here, which is possibly for a temperature sensor. You'll see we have another port right here, which is also for a temperature sensor. Oh, sorry guys. I just realized that those lower brackets I had just removed, they are brackets for the fan and it goes on the driver's side. See, they also have some at the top as well. They don't make a double fan because in most case swaps, there's not enough. Hey bro, get out the way. Uh, in most case swaps, there's not enough room on the passenger side because the intake sticks out pretty far. But in the case of the Prelude, we might have enough room for a dual fan setup. We'll see. Now, in order to get this radiator installed, I'm gonna have to relocate these mounting brackets right here. They are held in by spot welds. There's six on each one. So I'm gonna have to remove those two and re-weld them in these new locations. I'll mark them with the orange right here to show where I need the new studs to be lined up at. All right, feast your eyes on these beautiful welds. Oh man, look at that. Nice, thick, and solid. Ain't nobody else could weld like this. Oh my lord, this thing is gonna hold super nicely. I know for a fact that these welds should be able to hold a radiator. <laughs> well anyways, now that the radiator brackets are relocated to the new position, let's go and install the new radiator. Check that out. This radiator looks like it belongs in here. That's what I really like about it being universally built specifically for Hondas. It does look a little low right here, but I could raise it up with some spacers. And look at this. I like how the lower port actually has an indention right here on the uh, traction bar or front subframe. Pretty cool. I really like the fact that these ports are threaded on both of them. You could go with the OEM style for now. The slip on rubber hoses just to get the car running. And then later on when you want to go all out, you could take this out and install a fitting to run I think dash 16 AN lines. Pretty cool. Now, to be clear with you guys, when I started doing this K-Swap, there's a lot of things I didn't know about just K engines in general. So I learned about a lot of new brands. After doing some research, a lot of people recommend using the small fans. So I figured, you know what? If I'm gonna run their fans, why not run the radiator? So let's check out this fan shroud kit. Okay, three year warranty, individually balanced and tested to provide optimal performance in life. Okay, fully sealed motor, 
waterproof and dustproof and OEM approved. No instructions, oh well. Install this. I just wanna thank CSF for making a great product that's well known and trusted by a lot of car enthusiasts. I'm glad that I'm gonna be able to rest easy, sleep well at night, knowing that I got the best radiator for this K-Swap and the best fan to keep my engine cooled down. And on top of that, it's a very nice looking radiator. You could definitely run other radiators like a HN Civic or maybe a RSX or any radiator that is paired with the K24 or K20. I just wanted to go with this because it's meant for K-Swaps. So, you know, it's just nice and clean. It's full sized. You got the three different overflow tank ports right here. You got the studs that you could move around if you want or use the center one. It's not really in the middle, but right there. But this is what you get for a $600 radiator and fan kit. All right, it's a new day and today we're gonna be installing a lot of new parts. Since the radiator is installed, I figured, you know what? Let's go ahead and just focus on the rest of the cooling system. So over here on the table, we got a lot of goodies. We got a new water pump, a water pump housing, upper radiator hose, a couple of gaskets, sensors, and this little thingy. I'm not too sure what to call it, but it pretty much just goes right here. But before we start installing these parts over here, we gotta get these installed first. This is the water pump housing, and that's the water pump on the side right there. This is gonna go right here. Bam. And then on the side of the engine, we have like a another water outlet, I guess. I'm not even sure what it's called, but yeah, this is gonna go over here. Oops, there you go. All right, let's start off with installing a new water pump. This is a pretty unique design compared to the H22 water pump. There we go. Man, that looks pretty clean. Okay. This is a really nice tool to have. It's just a plastic scraper. Perfect for removing gasket maker or whatever without damaging the surface. Because if you use a freaking razor blade, yeah, you'll probably gouge the surface a lot. I know I did back in my day. Part number alert. This is an OEM water pump for K24. Ooh, nice and shiny. Okay, got that raw, that rocky. No, just kidding. Ooh, it's so reflective, look at that. Nice, nice, nice. And I guess we could just put it on. It already has a gasket. No need for Honda Bond. I mean, if I was using an aftermarket water pump, I'd probably use Honda Bond. <laughs> torque specs, no idea. I will torque them down eventually sometime later if I remember. <laughs> remember, hand tight. Once it catches a few threads, then you can use a wrench or, I don't even recommend impact, but if you're that confident, do that. Do you, bro. There we go. Torque spec to Ugga Juggas. Look at that. Pretty darn nice, if I do say so myself. You, 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 you. Now over here, I got an O-ring. Part number 19322 PCX003. Let's get it. Yo, what if it's the wrong O-ring and I just, just destroyed this one? <laughs> Make sure to scrape off this whole surface. I already did that and it seemed like it had gasket maker. So we're just gonna do that just to be safe. New O-ring. Should probably clean your hands before installing, but oh well. Think we'll be gooch. It's OEM, bro. It's built for abuse. Look at that, it looks nice and plush. Nice and plump. Ooh. Okay, K is in the bay. <laughs> what y'all know about that? Y'all even watched the last video? Probably not. All right, let's go and get the rest. Let's get this Honda Bond on there. You don't need a lot, just, you know, you're just trying to put a thin layer, nice and steady, or just nice and even. <laughs> Look at that, this is super thick. <laughs> I put way too much. All right. Here we go. 
Okay, on the side of the engine, um, I think this is just called like a coolant housing, coolant housing cover. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to find a way to plug this up or maybe just get an aftermarket one, who knows? But let's go and get this installed. Hit it with this just to be a little safe. All right, you already know, OEM gasket. This is the part number, 18714 RAA A01. Ooh, this blade is not as sharp as it used to be. Ooh, it's a metal gasket and not paper. Ooh, what if this is the wrong, oh, it's upside down. <laughs> I'm tripping. OEM and it doesn't fit, what? JK. Oof, look at that. Coolant housing should be nice and flat. Yeah. Oh wait. <laughs> there we go. Boom. Boom. And boom. All right. Water housing with the gasket installed. Uh water pump housing and water pump with the new o-ring installed Woo. so what do we got next now we got this this is a swivel thermostat by jack spania huge shout out to jack spania they hooked it up they're jumping on board with this k-swap and so they sent me a few parts that'll help with the build so i really like this because it's a swivel neck so pretty much all you do is loosen these right here once it's loosened, you're able to turn this 360 degrees. You can position this in any way to work with whatever radiator holes you're running. And you already know, with the CSF radiator, I like that you can change these ports from the slip-on style to dash 16 AN. Same with this right here. You get two ports. One is a dash 16 AN, and the other one is also a slip-on style. Up here, you get two ports. One is for the recirculating hose and the other one is for the heater. I think we're supposed to get two of these, but they only provided one. Pretty much this will go right here. You'll get two hoses if you have the stock setup. One hose would go to this port and the other one will be a hard line that goes around the engine and back to the firewall. And then the other hose will go to right here. You get me? Yeah, yeah. But I made a big mistake. I accidentally threw away that hard line just like a couple days ago. And yeah, I'm not gonna go dumpster diving in my apartment to look for it. <laughs> so it's all good. I don't need that second tube. I'm actually probably not even gonna use this. I'm just gonna create, I'm pretty much just gonna use braided lines for both of these. So again, one is gonna go to this coolant port and the other one is just gonna go wrapped around and straight to over there. One of those, I'm not sure. Another cool thing about this thermostat housing is you get a port right here. It's a 1 8 NPT. This is for the ECT sensor, which is this right here. This is what's gonna tell your gauge cluster on your car, on your dash. This is what's gonna tell you the temperature of your car. And then we also have, I think this is the fan switch. You could mount it right here you can see it's closed, so this is optional. If you wanna run the fan switch right here, you're gonna to have to drill out this hole. And if not, you could just leave it. On the CSF radiator, you get this plug right here, this port, and that's where the uh, fan switch will go. You can see it's kinda of tight, so I'm not gonna put it right there. And so, I'm gonna go ahead and just drill out this hole right here and get it installed on this thermostat housing. If you look inside, there's a thermostat. It looks really small. I don't think it's the same size as OEM. I'm gonna have to ask Jack Spanio about what thermostat this is. That way, if you ever need to replace it, uh, we'll know what to replace it with. And lastly, if you're trying to delete your heater, you get two plugs that'll go up here. And these are the plugs right there. Dang, I saved these bolts because I thought I would use them, but it doesn't look like I could reuse these on the new thermostat. All right, so you're gonna want these two holes up here upward because that's where the OEM hoses are gonna be. They're gonna be pointing straight down. Okay. Oops. And then we'll add this one.
I'm going to plug these for now just because I'm not going to use them anytime soon. I will do this slip-on nozzle for now. Eh. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. Hybrid racing ECT sensor. Part number right there. HYB THS thermostat. 0102 and just in case you guys are wondering i'm gonna leave all the part numbers in the description so be sure to check that out in every video i'm gonna try to put as much useful information in the description if you're trying to follow this case swap yourself we'll put it in the shiny hole right here and while we're in here this is a k24 knock sensor you can't run this you're gonna need a k20 knock sensor I got a brand new one from Honda. Here's the part number. 30530 PRB A01. You know it's K20 when it's green. Woo. I should have done this before I installed the thermostat. Oh well. Oh. Okay. K24. Single pin. K20 single pin. Look at that. Yeah, the plug wouldn't even go on there. Boom. All right. Now, don't quote me on this, but this is basically what's going on. This is the temperature sensor. I think this is the ECT sensor. That's what goes to the ECU. And then this one right here, this is another temp sensor, and this goes to your gauge cluster, okay? And this right here, it says switch assembly. This is the fan switch on, I know the HN Civics, they usually go on the bottom of the radiator, which is right there. Um, but I'm thinking about putting it right here just because it's accessible. And right there, it's too uh, narrow, not enough space to get in here. Um, I could probably plug it in there and finesse getting it plugged in, but I don't want to deal with that. But there is a small dilemma. See, here's the thermostat, right? If I put the fan switch right here before the thermostat, that means that the fan switch is going to turn on the fan sooner because it's reading the, that the engine is really hot, right? If I put the fan switch down here, the engine will reach whatever temperature first and then the thermostat opens. Once the thermostat opens, that's when the hot coolant goes into here and it'll take some time for this fan switch to read the new temperature and you know, that's when the fan will kick on. So it's actually not a bad thing because K-series are known to overheat really easily. So I don't think it'd really be a bad idea to put it before I'm the sorry. thermostat. I didn't quite catch that. I said K-series, not Hey Siri. Oh my Lord. But yeah, okay. So I'm gonna install this right there for sure. I just gotta pull this back out and drill a hole. All right, I couldn't figure out the lower hose, but I know this one works right here. Looks like a question mark. This is a RSX upper hose. Here's the part number. Gates 23248. Boom. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I could probably shorten it a little bit more. But, I mean, that works for now. All right, that's about as much as I can do for now with all the parts I have. We got a lot done on the coolant system, the radiators installed, fan and shroud. We got the upper coolant hose the side coolant housing, water pump, water pump housing, the thermostat and thermostat housing, temperature sensor, fan switch, still deciding where I'm gonna put it. And don't forget, you need that K20 knock sensor. You can't run a K24. All we need to do now is figure out what lower radiator hose to run. How are we gonna connect the heater hoses? One of these is gonna go straight to here. And the other one is going to go all the way around and straight to the thermostat. Um, and the extra port is going to go back up and to this little port right here next to the intake manifold. That's what this part is right here. I'm not going to install it because it sits on the gasket of the intake manifold. So I'm going to wait till we install the intake manifold and we'll install this little port right here. But all right, that's going to bring us to an end of the fourth episode of the K-Swap Prelude. Next up, I'm going to be working on the fueling system. I want to get everything 
mocked up before I pull everything back out and clean up the engine bay. So, coolant is done. We need the fuel system, the brake system, and power steering system. Once that's all out the way, we're gonna clean the bay. Oh yeah. But all right guys, if you made it this far in the video, I know you enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment down below, and tell me you're excited for this K-Swap. And with that being said, I can't wait to see you in the next one. Yeah.